Hi guys, I'm CL Creech, and this is my vlog series where I take a look at my past to help figure out my future. Welcome to Rediscovering Me. What's going on, guys? Uh, I'm back in the studio today. Um, I know last week uh, you got to see me out and about uh, around Kingdom Come State Park. I think that's what I'm going to try to do a little bit. Um, I'm going to try to kind of mix up out and about with um, with some just in studio talking from the heart kind of stuff. Um, today is a video <laughs> uh, I need to talk about something um, I really didn't want to talk about. Um, but in rediscovering who I am as a person and allowing you guys to kind of get into my head a little bit, it's something, uh, something that needs to be talked about. Um, let me show you guys a picture. Um, that's a picture of me with my grandfather, uh, or at least the man I always knew as my grandfather. Um, growing up. Um, Venom Boggs was married to my grandma. He was actually married into the family a couple of years before I was born. Uh, from the time I was about six months old, um, he took care of me. Plain and simply, you know, besides my dad and my grandma, he was probably my best friend in the world. You know, the three of them were my family growing up. Uh, my dad always hated it, but I always said I always looked at my grandpa more as a father figure and my dad more as, like, the big brother. Uh, dad always hated me saying that, but it's, it was the truth. Me and dad always had more brotherly relationship, whereas me and Papa were, he was more of the father figure. Um, the day this video comes out, it's going to be November 14th. Um, that day is very significant, and uh, the reason I wanted to talk about my grandpa on this day is um, November 14, 2015, he passed away. Uh, that was one of the three hardest days of my life, the other two being the day uh, my grandma passed away, which was uh, September 7, 2003, and the day my dad passed away, which was earlier this year of... Uh, May 25th, um, 2018. Those were honestly the three hardest days of my life. Um, I'll never forget the details of that day because it could have been prevented. <sighs> Let me kind of give you guys a heads up on how my year was going that year. Um, it was one of those... It had so many good moments and so many bad moments. 2015, in general, was a year I'll never forget. Um, I started with a wonderful company, at least at the time was a wonderful company, uh, earlier in the year as a virtual assistant. Uh, I got my wife to take a job with the, or she was my fiance at the time, and I'll get into that in a minute, um, to take a job with the same company. She left her other job, took a job with the same company. Um... And we were actually doing pretty good. We were both making pretty good money. Um, the Monday before we were supposed to get married, we got married um, in August of 2015. Uh, the Monday before we got married, oh, and by the way, this is a picture actually from our wedding with me, with my dad and grandpa. Um, we both got laid off. Um, it was devastating, but, you know, we knew we were going to make it. It was because of friends and family. Actually, it was because of family that we uh, we still managed to have our wedding. Um, I know in last week's video, I pointed out Creech Overlook at Kingdom Come State Park, and that's, um, that's where this picture was taken. That's where we got married. Um, at this point, I had started working a little bit after this. I started, well, actually, it was about the same time. I started working independently as a, uh, started at my own company. <coughs> Excuse me. And started working, um, as a virtual assistant. Uh, independently. 
um, later between the two points here, I ended up breaking a finger, which is a very funny story I'll tell another time. Uh, actually, I may let Peck tell it because she tells it way better than I do. Um, and I ended up having a small heart attack. Um, then on November 14th, uh, it was a Saturday morning. I, uh, I woke up and something happened. Uh, there was a connector piece on our house phone that had quit working or something like that. Um, so we needed to go get a new one. Fortunately, the closest place to get a new one, living you know in the middle of Hardly County, Kentucky, was Walmart, uh, which is about 20, 25, 30 minutes away. Um, so me and my wife decided, hey, you know, we need to run get this because we need the house phone working. Um, I remember just looking at my grandpa and telling him, I love you and we'll be back soon. My wife and I went to Harlan that day. I, uh, we went and got the piece at Walmart. We stopped and ate. After we ate, she wanted to drive around a little bit, but I kept telling her we needed to get home. There was something I needed to do. I just couldn't remember what it was. So we drove around about 15, 10 or 15 minutes. It wasn't long. And we came home. Um, we came home and there was a couple of our dogs running around in the yard, which was weird because they usually stayed in the house. So our first thought was, where's Pabal? We noticed the kitchen window open. We ran into the house. And uh, we couldn't find him. I come back out to find him face down, laying next to the garage. Um, I went in a complete panic mode. That's something that I, I feel horrible about. Uh I couldn't function. I didn't have a cell phone at the time. I borrowed a neighbor's cell phone because we didn't have time to hook the house phone up yet. And Beck started doing CPR on him. Um, apparently, he'd went out on the garage roof for some reason, which with our house, you had to come out the garage window or come out the kitchen window and walk out onto the garage roof where you could. Uh, and he, he'd done that. He fell off the garage roof and he was laying face down in his own blood. I sat on the phone with um, 911 panic and I was crying. And, uh, one thing you have to understand, uh, not only did he raise me, not only did I stay with him pretty well my entire life, um, when my grandma passed away on September 7th, um, 2003, you know, a week before she died, her dying wish to me was to, for me to stay and take care of my grandpa. She said she knew that me and him would need each other. Uh, and she could not have been more right. He and I did not agree on very many things. We argued more than I, uh, I care to remember that we did. Uh, but in the end, we loved each other and we took care of each other. You know, I... I always tried to make sure that he always had food, that the bills were always paid. You know, he had his um, social security check coming in and things like that, but I was always working. Um, there was never a point of more than maybe a couple of months that I didn't work. Um, living where we live, it, it was in, it, it's almost impossible to survive on one income. Um, I know that right now me and my wife are kind of going through the same thing. I've got the only income coming in right at the moment and it is extremely hard to survive. But, you know, um, uh, and I've always made it work. You know, when me and Beck got together, Beck moved in and she helped out. <clears throat> and I always said, you know, taking care of I've always hard sometimes, but in all honesty, he and I, I think took care of each other. And when Beck came along, it became all three of us taking care of each other. Um, so, yeah. Um, now let me
let me transition here to another picture. This is actually one of my favorite pictures of me and Dad and Pap all together. It was, again, from my wedding day. Uh, if you have me on Facebook, on my personal page, not on my comedy page, um, you'll see I have the longest time I, uh, I keep that uh, as the over profile of my picture. Um, I'm not sure. I can't think of the name of what it is right now. Um, but anyway, because I was in such a panic, Beg sat there for a good 30 minutes giving him CPR, fighting to save his life. The ambulance got there and they, uh, they took him to Harlan Air H. I called my dad. My dad came and picked me and back up because we were both in such a panic. He didn't want us to drive. Um, we went out to the hospital and found out he was pronounced dead. He had apparently fell and hit his head. Um, they fell off the garage roof while we were gone. You know, to this day, I really, I really regret not being home. I, uh, I kept thinking one time I should have been home. One time I shouldn't have left the house. And, uh, I did. I know there's nothing I can do about it. Nothing I can do to change what happened. But, uh, in my mind, I'm always going to regret that the one time I should have been home to help him out, I, I wasn't. Um, nobody really knew he had dementia. He had it pretty bad. Um, he'd been convinced for a while that people were stealing screws off our garage roof, and the only thing that makes any logical sense is that he'd went out to look at the screws on the garage roof as he was walking back he got dizzy and fell um there were a lot of accusations made especially a lot toward me because i was the one who was supposed to be taking care of him you know why wasn't i there you know did i have anything to do with it no i want to say that right now and i argued more than i care to remember but my family doesn't I never would have done anything to hurt him. The most hurtful thing I think I ever did was after my mom passed away as I left for about two or three months. Uh, I went and stayed with my mom for a little bit. Um, me being gone, that, and even though I was in you know, every other weekend, the entire time I was gone, it still hurt him knowing I was gone. And that was the most hurtful thing I could ever do to him. There were times we would argue and I, I would tell him, you know what, I'm just going to move out. I, I had put my life on hold to help him out and watch over him. And I don't want to say watch over him because he really, I want to say I put my life on hold because of my promise to my grandma so that me and him could watch out for each other. And uh, it was just... Uh, I had a point with what I was saying. Give me a second. Um, but we, uh, you know, I would threaten to move out and he would beg me to stay. You know, he had other family that cared about him, but they had their own lives. I put my life and I put everything I had on hold to take care of him. Nobody else was willing to do that. Um, we have, or he had other family members that had said, Hey, come move in with me. Um, or Hey, you know, uh, why don't you come live with me? He didn't want to do that because when my grandma died, he, um, he talked about her every day. I wish I had pictures of him and my grandma together. Um, but um, a lot of those are still put up. I just don't have them on the computer. And maybe uh, maybe in a later video, I'll show them. But uh, he didn't want to leave because he didn't want to be too far away from at all. Every day, he said something about her. And every day, he talked about how he wanted to be with her again. Um, i show one more quick picture here. Um, this... 
uh, is another one of my favorite pictures from our wedding. Um, you know, this is... I'm not going to say every important person in mine and my wife's life, because there are a lot of people missing out of this picture. But it was the people that we wanted more than anything to be there at our wedding. And starting on the left, uh, you had, uh, you had Bex, Granny, Kathleen. Let me tell you, with Kathleen, <laughs> and I hope she hears this, I really do, um, I hope she watches this video. Kathleen, she's an eccentric person, but she is one of the sweetest ladies I've ever met in my life. Um, not the best driver, but that's a story for another day. Um, every Christmas, she sends me and Beck a box of goodies of like uh, chocolate and um, fudge and things like that. And I tell you, you know, short of my grandma's fudge that I had growing up, Kathleen's was probably the best. Uh, I look forward to that every year, hands down. Um, Kathleen is a very sweet person. Uh, next is Beck's dad. Uh, nothing but mad respect for him. Career military. Um, if I said too much about him, he'd probably kill me, so I'm just going to move on. Um, Beck's stepmom, Jenny, again, sweet person. Uh Honestly, can't. She's one of those people, one of the very few people in this world I can't say a bad word about. Um, standing next to Jenny is Beck's mom, who unfortunately we lost earlier this year as well. Um, been a tough year. <laughs> Three major deaths in our family. Um, Beck's mom, me and her never really saw eye to eye on a lot of things, but uh. From the get-go, she accepted me into the family, and that means a lot. It really does. Um, the next to her is Big Stepdad Paul, again, good guy. Uh, going through a lot right now with the loss of Big's mom, and uh, just somebody, uh, somebody who to respect. Um, he always commanded respect and always will. Um, good person. Of course, next to the, that is my wife, Beck. You guys have heard so much about her on this channel, and you're going to hear a lot more. Um, so I'm not going there. Uh, next to Beck is this big, ugly guy. <laughs> no, of course, that's me. Um, next to me is my grandpa, who this video is about. My dad, who uh, will be the subject of another video. Probably next month around his birthday. And uh, my stepmom, who is a sweet person. She and I have probably argued more than almost anybody else. But, you know, every time I needed somebody, she was there. And she still is. Uh, the next to her is our preacher who performed the ceremony. Um, he did it last minute. So I, I couldn't be more grateful. But, uh... Anyway, back to the subject at hand. That day, one thing that will always stick out in my mind. Um, Papa's approval for me and Beck getting married was something. I, I don't seek anybody's approval. Me and Beck were going to get married almost, you know, regardless. Um, if anybody was going to stop the wedding, I figured it would have been Beck's dad. I think everybody there agreed with it. Um, but... There was these shelters where we had our um, reception. And down from the shelters, um, it's the lake that you guys saw in the last video. Uh, me and Papa walked down to the lake. And we just had the longest talk before the wedding. And he just told me how happy he was for me and how proud he was. <laughs> to have him and everybody else in this picture there that day. Uh, means. I'm sorry.
Oh. I made some more than words could say. Uh, that was probably one of the happiest days of my life, not the happy. Uh, I have that talk with my ball. For everything to go down the way. For a family to show their support. There are other people there that's not in the picture. Um, Meg's sister, uh, her Aunt Rhonda. I think her Aunt Rhonda actually took this picture. Um, so many other people. Um, a couple of Meg's cousins were there. Uh, It was just a really memorable day. I wish we could have got everybody in one big picture. Uh, I really do. And maybe we do have it. I just, I couldn't find it. Uh, go one last picture. This picture was taken around Memorial Day this year. Uh, I went up to visit Papa's grave. Uh, you can't sit on the right because the flowers are in the way, but that's actually my grandma on the right. Um, <laughs> Papa always talked about how he wanted to to be with Mama again, and now, now they're always together. I uh, yeah. He told me before he died that uh, he just never wanted to be forgotten. And he never will be. to believe it's been three years. <laughs> Fifteen for my mom. <sighs> you know, I know I'm not complete as a person. I think until, uh, until our nine days, we always grow. And that's what rediscovering me is all about, is my personal growth. And, uh, I could not have grew into the man I am without these two and without so many other people in my life. Every day I think about them, about them and about dad and some others. And, uh, I don't know if I made this video far longer than it should have been. But just today, on the day this airs, on the three year anniversary of the day he passed away, the day that I messed up because I wasn't home, I just want to tell him from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry I wasn't there. I know you're happier being back with Emma. We're wanting to move away from Cumberland. We stayed in the same place here for, uh, for a while since his death, but we're going to be moving, hopefully, at some point, but I'm still going to come back and visit him. <sighs> Alright guys, I am so sorry <laughs> I broke down. Um, this was just really hard for me. This was really hard memories. For me to, again, the purpose of why I'm doing this, um, this whole series is to help me figure out who I am as a person and how I would not be who I am if it wasn't for Ben and Bob and Carrie and several others, but this video is about him. Uh, he was a veteran 
He was a stepdad. He was a dad. He was a grandpa. But I guess more than any of that, he was one of my best friends in the world. Because, I don't know. Thank you guys for kind of bearing with me through this. If you knew him, I'm going to ask specifically with this video, do not say any mean comments. But if you knew him, and you have a great memory of it, post it down below. I've got so many great memories. Uh, you know, last month, um, I did the video talking about Norris Lake, and you guys saw Norris. Him and my grandma had a houseboat there, and I spent most of my, a good portion of my childhood in, in their houseboat. And that was the best memories of my life, to be completely honest. Uh, I was not blood to him. I was his stepson's child, and he raised me. He cared for me as his own. And he would tell me later on that, uh, that I was like a son to him. That meant more than anybody could ever say. I don't know if he was a great man. I don't know if he could ever be remembered as a great man. He had his flaws, just like we all do. But he was a great pal. And he was one of the best friends I ever had. November 14th, 2015, he was taken from me, but he was given back to my grandma. And when I think about the day he died, that's the one thing that makes me smile, is to know they're together again, and they all be cool. I'm going to go ahead and end this here. On the note, Grandpa, I love you. I miss you. And I'll think about you every day. I love you, Grandpa. I love you, Grandpa. I love you, Grandpa. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my latest video. If you like what you see, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that little bell so you get the latest notifications of every time I post a new video. Also, check out the links below. There might be some interesting stuff. You want to see me live? Could be. You want to help support the channel and get new content? Could be. You never know. I'm updating it often. Probably more often than this video. Just go subscribe, like, now, and click the links. We can make a wildfire get away.